Hello, my name is Matt, and welcome to a sort of new Minecraft project. Joe's not here at the moment, he's away, but we were like thinking of this idea, but since he's been away and run out of videos to put up, um, I decided to start building it, see how it looked, and just get an idea of the redstone behind it. So, these like, this is this is basically what it is, if anyone's played like a Rathy Basin, or a game of Territories on Halo, or something like that, um, if it's basically there's four bases, there's two teams, you can see there's blue and a red team, and if you control the base, it'll gradually give your team points. And of course, the more you own, then the more points you get. Now, by default on this, each team already starts with two, since we can't do it with neutral without having a ton of redstone. So basically, each team starts out with two. And if we come over here, say this is just a capture point, then if you go onto the pressure plate, you'll start to capture it. So say like I'm on the red team, I'll start capturing it. It'll charge up. If I do come off, if I come off it though, it'll cancel the charge, so you can knock people off it to stop them capturing it. But after they do capture it, then it'll change whoever owns it, like that. And that's basically the gist of a capture point. So there's four of these, and what I'll probably do is I'll probably generate like one resource or like one point every five seconds. Now I'm not going to go into detail of how the point system works, because it's I don't I've never seen it be used before, so I want to say I've invented this idea and it's an original idea so I'm going to keep it under wraps for now and play and, and probably show it off in another video but um, basically it's a square map it's quite small um, that's going to be the spawn point for a blue team and then the spawn point for a red team is this one um, I've, I've been hiding this because I'm pretty damn pleased with this I'm, I'm going to copy this over so there will be two castles and then there's going to be like colour changes on it and stuff but I'm very happy with how this castle turned out. I basically just was building. This is all block for block as well. I've not, because I've been doing this on single player, so I've got no mods, and I'm too lazy to install single player commands to have world it. So this uh, this has been done by hand. Um, I don't take 100% credit for the building design. This archway was actually on Hypixel's Wrath of the Fallen map, although I have changed a few of the blocks around. Like I've added these glowstone bits. I've changed the bricks for dark wood, and I've changed, and I've put dark uh, logs in there. And very very tiny changes. It is like the same layout. I've only just changed blocks, but then the rest of it I've just expanded upon that design, made all this, and I'm fairly pleased with it. I'd like to say this is original now because I have sort of just created this from scratch. Now this is very different to the castle he made, but this suits the purposes perfectly because you won't be able to come up here or anything like that. It'll be down here. It'll, it'll, you know the spawn room will be in here. And then when the game starts, these will get lowered, and then you'll be running to try and capture the capture points. Now, did I capture one of the points? Those are both blue. That's red. That's red. Oh, yeah, I captured it back, didn't I? So, I think now would be a good time to show the redstone, because it's not much, as you can probably tell, although it doesn't look it. There is actually quite a lot of redstone that goes into that, because the fact that if I was to, if it was just a normal like redstone current that went through those, all I have to do is stand on it, and then you can see that lights up, then that one, then that one, then that one, then that one. The fact that this builds and then stops if I come off the pressure plate, it actually takes quite a lot of redstone. I believe this was invented by Hypixel because it was on the Dust Bowl map as well, or, or by Sethling actually. It's one of the two. Um, but basically, what it is is this section here is the build-up, as you can probably tell. Or if I don't know, if you know redstone, these are these are and gates. We showed these in Beginner's Guide to Redstone. There's five and gates because there's five lights. Now, if you stand on the pressure plate, which is up here, then it'll power this redstone current. The only reason I've got this here is because rather than make it so it takes one extra block, it just goes down one. Powers that block, powers that. You know, it's no different. And then this goes to the this goes to half of the five and the gates, which so turns these off. Yeah. And then also it goes this way. After a build up, yeah, so a certain amount of time, it'll power all these torches off. This is in effect a massive and gate, because you know you've got five inputs and then the torch that they're all powering. So it'll charge up, it'll turn that one off, then that one, then that one, then that one, then that one, which will let this turn on. So this will turn off this AND gate completely, because that's already off. This will light up. That'll go up to the first light. Then it'll do the same. It'll build up, and then it'll go to the next one. Second light, and so on, all the way up to the end. Now, the reason it has to be like this is if you take your foot off the pressure plate, then, of course, all these AND gates then turn back on, so the redstone current can't actually go any further. And then the reason all these torches are here is if you were to go off the pressure plate briefly and then back on it again, you would be able to probably turn this off and then back on and then still let the current go. But what this does instead is, if you come off it, this will turn back off, which will let this one come back on for a brief second. And then the redstone current from before will carry on going along, 
but this will still be on because it won't turn off because it's past that one so it, will just, it just won't go past so that's why all that's needed and then after that it hits a T flip flop which is this bit here which of course toggles this bit of redstone which comes down here now there's two different ways it can go one way is this way which is to the blue base points and then this way is in inverted so it goes to the red base now if, I t if the game's on if the game started these will go down and then depending on who owns it the clock will cycle yeah however if i toggle if someone stands on it charges this up gets this torch on the t flip flop will toggle this bit will turn on so this torch will turn off and this side will turn on instead so if i press that it swaps over and then that that team will be gaining points instead and then all this bit here is doing is oh no that's the fifth one never mind this one here is the one that goes up to the light at the very top of the tower and basically all it does is there's one signal and then it inverts one way and just continues the other way so when this changes this will turn off which will let this torch turn on which will light that up and turn that one off and then if i come back down here the only other bit of redstone that there is is this piston here and what this basically does is at the end of the game this button here is a reset button. I want at the end of the game to, for those two to go back to blue and these two to go back to red. Now, this is, if this is owned by blue, it's not at the moment, it's owned by red. So if, let's just change this. Well, no, actually. It is owned by red at the moment. This is the this is the reset. So, of course, it's owned by red at the moment. So the redstone won't go through, so it won't reset. However, if it's owned by blue, yeah, that'll turn this torch off because this is powered, of course. And then that'll let this torch over here... Oh, no. That'll retract the piston so that the reset signal can go through to flip it one more time. And that's basically all it is. It's, it's a lot of redstone for a very simple mechanism. And of course, I've just duplicated that three other times. All these bits are, at the moment are the entrances to the bases. I'm going to make a timer on these and then it's going to close, etc. And that's pretty much it for this map. But we thought... we. We really enjoy making multiplayer maps. After making the Predator map and then just playing it, it is really fun to make it and then see it in action and see everyone enjoy playing it. So, and also as well, there are projects we can give out to download as well. Whereas the RuneScape and Minecraft one, we show updates, but that's always on the server and the server's down at the moment, which is even worse. And um, these have more function. Like you can download a map like RuneScape and Minecraft. You can fly around and go, oh, this is cool, and then never go back on it again. Whereas this one, you'll get a bit more play out of it probably if it's good you can get like teams together it'll probably be 4v4 5v5 and then you can just play around on this and then play a game and it'll reset you can reset the map and it'll have classes and stuff like that so you can choose what weapons and stuff you can have and it'll be it'll be pretty good it'll take a lot of balancing this one because of the idea of it but with the idea that i mentioned earlier of how i've sort of invented the way of how to give points to teams um we'll also be able to make it so that if you kill someone on the other team you get points for that as well now I've never seen that be done before, um, like in the way that I have. The play is someone's probably done it before, but what we could also do after this as well is we could remove these capture points and have it as like a team deathmatch game instead, of like first to fifty kills or something like that, which I've never seen in Minecraft done in vanilla before. At least anyway, there's probably mods that let you do that. But that's basically it. So I'll see you in this video. Bye.